my friend Zach. Hey. Hello. Whoa, is that the laser? It's bitchin'. <laughs> Yes, in 1917, when Albert Einstein established the theoretic foundation for the laser in his paper Sir Quentin Terry der Strahlung, his fondest hope was that the resultant device be bitchin'. Well, mission accomplished. Let me explain what we're doing here. Uh, in 1969, the astronauts on Apollo 11 positioned reflectors on the surface of the moon, and we're going to shoot a laser off one of them and let the light bounce back into this photomultiplier. Oh, that's very cool. One question. How can you be sure it won't blow up? The laser? The moon. See, now this is a man for Penny. Uh, uh, that's a great question, Zach. No, it's not. Sheldon, play nice. Well, it's not a great question. How could somebody possibly think we're going to blow up the moon? <laughs> That's a great question. Don't worry about the moon. We, we set our laser to stun. Smart. Now, we'll be able to see the beam when it leaves, but it won't be strong enough when it comes back to be seen by the naked eye. Naked. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, funny. So, um, that device there will measure the photons that return and let us see it on this computer. Raj, get them some glasses. Cool, it's gonna be in 3D. <laughs> Preparing to fire laser at the moon. Make it so. There it is, there's the spike. 2.5 seconds for the light to return. That's the moon. We hit the moon. <laughs> That's your big experiment? I'll have our line on the screen? Yeah, but uh, think about what this represents. The fact that we can do this is the only way of definitively proving that there are man-made objects on the moon, put there by a member of a species that only 60 years before had just invented the airplane. What species is that? <laughs> I was wrong. Penny can do better. Okay, guys, thank you. It's been fun. Yeah, thank you.